This is the world's smallest power bank. It measures in at just under one centimeter cubed and is capable of delivering 1.5 amps at five volts, which is the minimum requirement in the USB spec. It may not be the most practical, only being able to give your phone between zero and 1%, but it does meet all the requirements to be a charger according to the USB-C spec. So let's take a look at how I built this and the insane engineering that went into it. Making a board a little bit smaller isn't that hard. Take for example this board. I purchased it off AliExpress and it's all right, it does the job. I was pretty easily able to shrink it to about half the size by just laying it out a bit better and using some higher quality capacitors. The problem is I can't make it much smaller than this board, which leads to a problem, making the world's smallest power bank, we need to make a smaller circuit board. So how do we do that? This is the inductor from that board. It's a 55 microhenry inductor, and it seems pretty small, until we compare it to the one from the world's smallest power bank, which you can see in the end of the tweezers is considerably smaller. So how was I able to shrink it so much? Well, there are two factors at play. The first simple one is this is a PD board, so it required a higher power output, around five amps, whereas mine only needs 1.5 amps. So I can use thinnest wire and therefore shrink it a little bit. But the main thing at play is the switching frequency of the boost converter. This one switches at about 30 kilohertz, which is why it needs a 55 microhenry inductor. My power bank, however, switches at 2.2 megahertz, which means it needs a much smaller one microhenry inductor, which is where the shrinkage comes from. Also, this is a higher quality inductor and has much more advanced machining techniques than this slightly smaller, slightly crappier one. The same thing goes for the capacitors. On that board, they're about this big, which isn't that big. These are already very high quality small capacitors. However, in the world's smallest power bank, they're a lot smaller. I don't even know if you can see that spec on my finger. I was of course able to achieve this by switching at a higher frequency, but I was also able to achieve this by using a boost converter rather than a buck boost converter. This means I need much smaller input capacitors because there's no discontinuous current on the input. It's not that difficult to build a small voltage converter. The problem is when you have to power that, you need a battery. And with lithium batteries, the smaller they get, the less current they can output. For example, the maximum discharge of a battery is an important thing to pay attention to. This battery from a Samsung phone, for instance, has a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity and a 3C discharge rate. That means the maximum speed you can discharge it at is 5,000 milliamps times three, or 15,000 milliamps, which will just shorten to 15 amps. However, if we shrink that battery down so it's only a 1,000 milliamp hour battery, now we can only discharge it at three times 1,000 or 3,000 milliamps, which will shorten to three amps. And that's the problem. The smaller we make the battery, the harder it is to get enough current. I set out with the goal to create a power bank less than one centimeter cubed. So I needed a battery small enough that with the circuit board, it would be able to be smaller than that maximum limit. And after a lot of looking, I was able to find a 45 milliamp hour battery with a 60C discharge rate. Okay, granted, that's not a lot of capacity, but it was small enough. So I ordered it, and that's what we're using. It has a maximum discharge of 2.7 amps, which is just enough to be able to supply almost five volts at 1.5 amps when it's fully discharged.
I literally yapped about the design for about half an hour, and it was incredibly boring, so I'm gonna skip it for now. However, the board is done. All we need to do now is order it. Yo guys, do you want to sponsor a video? Yeah, it's Boris, yeah. No, you just got to send me some stuff for free. Yeah, you'll do it. Alright, fantastic. Get in. Let's go. Bye. PCB way are going to sponsor this video. So let's get this sent off. Ordering through PCB way is pretty simple. I just come over to their website. Ideally, I go to the PCB um, section. <laughs> now we just upload our files. There's no Gerber files there. That's because that's not the... Go upload our Gerber file, it all loads in, it's going to cost us $5, except it's not, because I need to select things. And I'm actually going to add assembly to this turnkey quantity, go one board assembled. You don't need to see the whole order process. All you need to know is you can check out the link in the video description and find a way to PCBWay's website. Alright, let's check out the board we got. For some reason I decided to order 15 boards. Um, that's a thing I did. I have no idea. I must have been drunk at the time. I got the fully assembled board here, but I'm going to need to switch to a macro lens because even with quite a lot of zoom, this is just too small. The macro lens didn't cut it, so I switched over to a microscope, and as you can see here, there's some components on a very tiny board. You might also see there's no battery, and I have to solder it on. Which went well. <laughs> All I've got to do is exactly that all over again. I'd say it was round about here that my soldering iron broke, so I had to switch to my giant 250 watt one, which actually worked, surprisingly. I do not want to hear a single comment about how bad that is, because I just did that with a soldering iron tip four times the size of the pad. All right, it's done. Great, see you next week. Oh, you want me to show you the battery in action? Yeah, well, I actually lost it, which is slightly embarrassing. Fortunately, I did do some testing with it before I lost it. So here's a video of it charging my phone. All right, let's give this a go. World's smallest power bank. My phone is currently on 67%. Let's plug this in and see how it goes. Charging, yes! Glad to see it's charging quickly. That, that was a joke. It's charging, it says two hours and 50 minutes till full. <laughs> It, it stopped. We gained a grand total of zero percent. Let's go. Good job, me on the world. I should unplug this. Zero percent. Okay, so maybe this isn't the greatest portable charger. But technically, technically, it fits into the category, supplied my phone with some power for about 40 seconds, and then slightly less, but still power, for another 20 seconds. And I've walked off the edge of the pavement while looking at the camera. I also think people might struggle to see how small this actually is. So here are a couple of comparisons with things you might have at home. This is the world's smallest power bank next to a GoPro. It's quite a lot small. So let's try something smaller. This is the world's smallest power bank next to a dessert spoon and a teaspoon. 
Still, not really giving us much scale. We need something smaller, but what? Let me know in the comments and I'll compare it to it in a short. Also, thank you so much for watching.